our filtration area. But uh, this is only a portion of it. There's much more in the building behind you. These are our water pumps. Each one of these pumps around 7,000 liters of water a minute, which in total with our whole building is 132 million liters of water, which is what Winnipeg pumps in a day, so that is what quite a bit of water. Uh, and if we turn our attention to these large cylinders behind us, these are called foam fractionators. Uh, the blue one, if you look in the very top, on my angle, there is a lot of foam coming out the top, and that's us creating sea foam. Uh, so naturally in the wild, sea foam is how the ocean cleans itself, but we don't have every animal or organism in our habitat, so we need to clean the waters with machinery. So we add air bubbles into the system, and it traps all of the tiny particulates, raises it up to the top, and cleans it with something called ozone, which we do create on site. all the way downstairs to see it up close. Um, the second stage cleans out the little particulates because it traps them with surface tension. So like um, feces, leftover food, germs, and dust. The main stuff is taking out. And each of the systems for cleaning is separate for each of our habitats so we don't transfer all any bacteria between habitats or uh, have to worry about the habitat
what they wanted to see, and they said filtration! So that's why this section exists. <laughs> and we are the third of the three Ripley's parks, and the only one in Canada. This is our area for salt mixing. So uh, that's behind these doors. So there's a box that has a panel that's where we open it up for the tap mix of salt water because below us is a basin of water. Um, yes. <laughs> so uh, we use about 13 different types of salts, uh, some of them ranging from the typical table salt to a more trace element metal salt. So that we when they come in, which is not today, we get big skids of salt. We usually get three of them. Um, they sit here until our salt mixing day. We go in there and then the players get their workout for the day, for week, uh, by ripping open the bags and pouring them into our salt that mixture. Um, our recipe is unique for the Ripley's Aquariums because we do trade a lot with them. Uh, and we want to know if there's ever a leak. They happen to go out into the natural world, which hasn't happened yet. <laughs> filtered cleaners, but they do the same thing. Uh, and then over here, this is where we make ozone. So if you're not sure how to make ozone, you actually strike air with lightning, and that's what we do in this room, and that's why we're not going in there, because it's magic. <laughs> uh, and then over here, because uh, all that we've done so far is we were upstairs where the stingrays were, we walked down a flight of stairs, and that doorway over there is where the shark tunnel is. So we just had a quick shortcut the building to so get your bearings. Uh, and then we're going to talk about these. So these doors and those doors help us transport things. So uh, we will open them up to move like the big piping around the building uh, a little bit easier. There's a crane upstairs we'll go to as well. And up there is our husbandry hallway. So we're going to head there next. Uh, but you can see the filtration just continues on down that way. And there's a floor below us that's fully filled with filtration. They all stand for something, the colors? Yeah, there's three types that actually stand for something, and then they get shot up for something. There are four more eddies upstairs. Anyway, these, like, you can see them now. There are a lot of types. So you can those two types, the light purple, the, the dark blue, and the light blue, and they all have different characteristics. We're going to go upstairs as a don't label them. I want to say Lake Ontario. Okay. The other guesses are City of Toronto and the Ocean. So, what do you guys think? I don't think it's the City of Toronto. It can't be the Ocean. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so water comes from the City of Toronto. Lake water is kind of polluted, so it's hard for us to get already cleaned. So, we take the stuff from the city, and then we take out the stuff put in for people, which is ammonia, fluoride, and chlorine, and then we add salt. That's how we make our water. So here is the loading bay for our animals and everything else that comes in here with the So this one is more for our animals, so that's why there's a crane. The crane is behind a lot, we'll get there. <laughs> and uh, our animals that come here, they uh, come, well it depends on the size of the animal. The littler ones, like a jellyfish, just come like a pet from a store, in a box, in a bag. Very simple. Uh, but a larger animal, like a shark or a grouper, comes in a special truck actually made for this building that can transport large animals. So they have a uh, four, four wells, one of them's just for water cycling, and the other three can transport the animals. And there's always somebody on that ship, um, on the truck, that actually knows what they're doing. So they can actually get the animals here in a good way. They do most often go through our holding facility first, which is in Buffalo. So they do have to cross the border to get here. So because they do have to cross the border, they have to get all their specs right. And if they don't, like there's a snowstorm, which has happened many times, then we delay us getting our animals. So the next time they get all their checks out. And we're gonna go behind this door, but we have to go around to get there. All of them, they're all labeled. We were in a spot that wasn't good. So um, air, which is oxygen, salt water, and fresh water. And it's through the whole building. 
So if we ever need anything from any of these pipes, we can just put a bucket underneath and get what we want. Go ahead. The big difference between our salt water and our fresh water is the addition of salt and for the yeah, that's good. Good job. Um, and for the uh, brackish water, which is halfway in between, we do uh, we we just add more water to make it less salty. So here are the doors we were standing on before, or below, sorry. This is the crane we're talking about. So that crane is used most often to lift salt downstairs, but it's also used to support the lead of any of our animals moving to that area over there. Uh, when we do transport animals within the building, we can't put their whole body in a tank because sometimes they're just too big for the vessels we have. So we stick the breathing end of the animal in there and then quickly move it to where it has to go. <laughs> the water inside the bucket will be the same that they were in, so we're not stressing the animals out. This is our animal food freezer. Do you want me to open the door? It's chilly. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Can't go in. You can look in. Like, you can pull through cameras in. Yeah, watch out. Don't step in. Why <laughs> cold? Hey, you should have done this. So where did that go? <laughs> uh, very interesting smell. Yeah. So this is our animal food freezer. For the most part, uh, in there is like squid and shrimp and clam uh, and fish, lots of fish. Uh, all that's in boxes. It, uh, we get a shipment of food once a week and it will go pretty much all fully straight in the freezer. Uh, and then to make sure the uh, food is good for the animals, we actually uh, note what the temperature is in the freezer in case it stops working and we can start which doesn't really happen. This is on a backup generator, so if the power does go in the city, this will stay on. Fun fact, the cafe freezers go off. <laughs> <laughs> but this one will stay on. Because <laughs> um, it's essential life system support. Uh, we have 800 pounds of food coming in every week. A lot, and about 65% of that goes into the shark habitat. Okay, so my question for you is, can you eat the food in there? Yes. I hope so. Yes, you can eat the food in there. Yeah, right. Is it? Okay, I was like, isn't it raw? Oh, well, like I mean, it? obviously you can cook it, but <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, people have eaten raw food before, but this is completely safe for people to eat. It's actually probably better than you would buy for yourself. So it's a, it's a good food in there. It's fishy better than we do. Yeah. Right. Uh, the last thing I didn't mention that we're going to do about the is this thing here, the chili plant. So we actually send water outside the building during um, during the winter season uh, to cool it naturally. So it just goes on piping that we have around the outside of the building, and then the natural temperature will cool the outside, uh, cool the water, and then it comes back in. Uh, it's not really just pipes in there. <laughs> However, uh, last year and the year before, we do about 40 days on that. Wow. And we're going to go in the kitchen. I'm sorry you can't record smells. <laughs> okay, so our kitchen is fairly clean. Uh, we want to make sure that nothing grows in places we don't want it to. Uh, we want to make sure that the animals get the right type of food. Some of them are picky and they don't like the food touching their other food, like kids. Um, and then uh, we do keep the area really clean, so we bleach it every day. Uh, all of the these are refrigerators. We have to thaw our food first before it goes out. So um, we are doing a shark feed tomorrow. That's what this food is for. This very frozen stuff is probably also for tomorrow or for the next one, which is on Tuesday. So our next shark feed after tomorrow is Tuesday. How often do the sharks eat every two days? Three. Uh, no, uh, every three times a week. Oh, OK. Sorry, I, I, miss, I mistook that. But uh, we have any of these boxes that squid. And here is the food for the stingrays. So these are live clams in here, so that's a live one. Ah. Hello, friends. Oh, God. It's not going to lick you or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is a clam. It's a live clam. The spotted egorays have to eat live clams to make sure their teeth stay healthy. So if they don't use them, they lose them faster than they normally would because they're shark relatives. 
Uh, so we keep them in this nice wet habitat in the fridge before we feed them to the stingrays. And then here's the stingray food. So we got uh, food for dive shows, which will be in these buckets, and then food for the top is in these sort of buckets. So they got some shrimp, that's the pink stuff. The orangish color is clam that's not in the shell, uh, which we get in boxes. And then we have these little fish, which are called piglet, and the stingrays don't really like them. <laughs> good. All good. Battery change. Battery change? Oh my gosh. Ooh, look, there's a lot of lettuce. Where's the Chewy. So, Chewy is the name of one of our turtles. Oh. Yes. <gasps> you feed the different turtles different, or like different... That's fine. They're on different diets right now because one of them is sick. Oh. Yeah, so we also have algae. So if you want to smell something great, we can open this and you can smell it. You I should smell it. I have a feeling it doesn't smell Wait. very good. Oh, you Wait, can't open it with that on. You have to unscrew it. Let's get the camera going. Oh, that is no. <laughs> Probably doesn't smell that bad. I know it doesn't. It's just like it's algae is a very potent smell. That's it. Uh, and then we have a lot of stuff you probably recognize. Like this stuff. We got some lettuce. You can put your camera right in here if you want. Lettuce, and we have lots of other goodies that everybody knows about. <laughs> Those are Brussels sprouts, which I love. Uh, so they don't eat that in their natural habitat. So we feed them this here because it's easier to get good things that grow here in Ontario. <laughs> um, in nature, they would not eat that sort of stuff. Um, our animals don't get vitamin D because they live indoors, so we do have to crush vitamin D into their food or put tablets in. And it is the same stuff you probably have inside your house. <laughs> so uh, this is our lagoon feeding board. I don't like to call it dangerous lagoon because the sharks in there are treated, they're not dangerous and a lot of people think they are. So I want to just get rid of that. That's why it's in quotations. That's why it's in quotations. Sharks look scary and they, I understand why people are afraid of them, but they really like to eat fish. We, we shouldn't condemn them, we just want to eat fish. <laughs> So today's Saturday, which is very unexciting. And the food is wrong because they're fasting today. But tomorrow is very exciting. Let's look at that. Tomorrow Sunday. We have mahi, which is also called dolphin fish, mackerel, and herring. Those are being fed to the big sharks. And as you can see, we are cutting the heads and tails off. The sharks won't eat them anyway to spit them out. And then our filters have trouble, so we start early helping our filters out. And then the other stuff that we have in here is being fed to the little fish. So um, when we are feeding it, we're throwing the food in for the little fish. Uh, we have our big habitat has many different sides to it. So one side is meant for feeding the sharks and the other side are for the little fish. So we feed the big sharks, take a stick, put it on the end and we put it in front of the shark's face and the sharks will eat the food off the stick. And the little fish, we throw the food in for them on the sides. So they get a good variety of food. And they're also out of the way of an eating shark because, you know, that can happen where they can get eaten, right? find it easy. The easy thing you can do is tell a shark apart by their gender. Did you guys figure that out? No? No. Okay, so if you look at the pelvic fins, which are the ones over here, near their hips, uh, on female sharks they look like this, kind of standard, and on male sharks they look like this. So it makes it really easy to tell them apart. Uh, sharks, stingrays, and sawfish all have the same identifier. So next time you go to an aquarium, you can easily tell them apart.
gonna come for us today? Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Is that real or not real? Real. No. Really? It's fake. We tricked you. <laughs> uh, so the kelp is actually fake because it uh, grows really fast. It grows about two feet a day. So we would rather not have to do that much maintenance. So we don't have the real stuff in there. Uh, usually habitat uh, like aquariums that are more coastal will have the real stuff because they can get water from the ocean, bring it in to help it survive because kelp lives in a naturally high nutrient area, which living in inland Ontario, we really don't have. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, this large green coral down here, if it was a real coral, would be about uh, 500 years old. Wow. So that's another main reason why we don't have the real stuff here. Uh, and any aquarium shouldn't have this large of real coral because it would not be sustainable. You can have little habitats with it, but larger ones, it pretty much means you've got it from the wild. And taking coral to the wild is illegal and not a good idea. A normal coral would provide shelter, food, and oxygen for the habitat. However, uh, our coral is just a shelter. We pump oxygen in and we feed our animals. Uh, and if you hold your cameras up really high, you can see that habitat. Uh, they are fortunate. Did you guys crawl through the habitat? That's that. Oh. 